Assalamu alaikum. This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org slash donate. As little as $10 a month can help people find life-changing guidance. The next question is, uh, what do you recommend for Muslims who live in Europe uh, slash North America to help out Muslims in war-torn countries during the, those days of uh, the Hijjah? What can one do to help those in war-torn countries? Um, there's One should never underestimate the power of dua, right? The power of dua, right? And the power of concern. The Prophet saw someone came to commanding the good and forbidding the wrong. He said, whoever of you sees the wrong, let them change it with their hand. And if one cannot, then with one's tongue. If one cannot, then with one's heart. And that's the least of faith. Right? Meaning that if you cannot change something with your own hand, then you change it with your tongue. By correcting it, by speaking out against it. And if you cannot change it with your tongue either, then change it with disliking it with your heart. Right? So the concern of the believer is transformative. Right? By the promise of Allah and His Messenger. So that's one thing. You, have to, you, you should have concern for the good of others. How is that expressed? It's expressed firstly in dua. Secondly in charity. There are many charities operating in all these spheres. Support reliable charities that are properly registered, that are trustworthy, etc. Consult those who know in, in your country. Like if you want to support any of these causes, there are good charities that are working. You do your due diligence and you support them. If, there, if you are able to raise awareness, etc., one simple way of raising awareness is that anything that you support, encourage others to support it as well. That's part of what tawasaw bil haqq, who remind one another to the truth. Is that anything of the good that you do, encourage others. Sometimes we feel shy. That I don't want to be the person always telling others, do this and do that. No. None of you believes until they wish for others of the good that they wish for themselves said the Prophet That's a simple thing. In some way or the other, if, if you give in charity, you don't have to say, I did it too. Or well, sometimes that can be useful. Especially if you're, you know, listened to or respected. And sometimes even if you're not listened to nor respected, right? sometimes it can help. Especially if your intention is sound. That, you know, I found this charity that's really good and I support it. Why don't you as well? It could encourage, you know, friends and family to do so. And that's something that one should not feel لا حياء في الخير There's no shyness in the good. Right? So, so do that. Um, and they say that don't be deluded about the ways of good even if not many people pursue them. Because the, the truth and good is not, is not by popular vote. That good things are the ones that everyone supports. Not necessarily. Right? So if you found something of benefit, share it with others. Right? That, that's one way to help them. Right? Because you manage to donate $10 a month to, you know, a cause, you know, to help a given crisis. But you manage to encourage 10 other people to do so. Right? Um, if you are able to engage in raising political awareness, etc., then that's, yeah, that, that's an area as well. But one also has to remember when it comes to crises and tribulations that the believer cannot only look at crises and tribulations with the eye of responsibility. You have to have concern, but that's not the only way you look at things. You have to look at things with the eye of concern, but also with the eye of certitude. The eye of concern is the nazarul islam. That as a servant of Allah, you are responsible on earth for what you can do personally and we share collective responsibility. That what can we do together 
in any given cause. That's the, that's the eye of responsibility. But if you look only with the eye of concern and responsibility, it is easy to get overwhelmed. There's so much going on. Any one cause, you look at it, you'll be overwhelmed if you think long enough about it. So the believer does not just look, at, look with the eye of submission, of, of being a responsible servant, nazarul islam, of concern and responsibility. Because if you only look with that eye, you'll feel overwhelmed by trials, by tribulations. The believer also looks with the eye of faith, nazarul iman, which is to see, kullun min indillah, it is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And therefore, one is content, inwardly and outwardly, with everything exactly as it is, because it is from Allah. And that, that is the eye of faith, which is to have complete certitude that all is from Allah. Complete contentment that this is exactly how Allah has willed it to be. So the believer looks with two eyes, because if you only look with the eye of faith, then you can be complacent. No, we look both with the eye of faith, which is to have complete certitude that is from Allah, and complete contentment that this is exactly how Allah has willed things to be whether around you or in your own life, it is perfect. Right? This is هَذَا خَلْقُ اللَّهِ This is the creating of Allah. Right? Does anything happen in this world outside of the will and power of Allah? هَلْ مِنْ خَالِقٍ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ Is there a creator other than Allah? So everything. That's why it is bad adab to complain about the weather. Because who created the weather? So if you're saying, oh, Allah created everything, but you know, this bad weather, did he do it? Yes. Any objections? No. Right? So that's the eye of faith. But it must be coupled with the eye of responsibility. Right? So it's very important. We have to have concern because we are servants of Allah. And he has made us responsible for having concern for the good of others. None of you believes until they wish for others of the good that they wish for themselves. We want every good that we seek for ourselves, for every one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. We want guidance for, we want faith for everyone. We want guidance for everyone. We want worldly good for everyone. And anyone who is, doesn't have faith, we are concerned that the call of faith is weak in our times. The call of guidance is not reaching all those whom it could reach. That the, that the preservation of human worldly good is not happening. Every Every, every departure from human good concerns a believer. But with complete contentment that things are exactly as Allah has willed them to be, this is the, the abode of tribulations. Allah has created death and life, liabluakum, to try you, to test you. If you don't think that you're going through tests, it is only because you don't get what's going on in your life. And sometimes the tests of ease are much more difficult than the tests of hardship. Right? So we, we have to practice this complete contentment with complete concern. And that's the prophetic balance. That's the prophetic balance. He was da'imul bishr mutawasilul ahzan, the Prophet He was constantly cheerful, yet constantly deeply concerned. And the huzn there refers to Deep concern. Okay. Deeply saddened by anything that hurt anyone in their dunya or their deed. Allahumma hadi qawmi fa innahum la ya'alun. Allah guide my people for they, for they do not know. Even in battle. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that's, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that kind of concern. Right? And in these days we should be praying. But with complete certitude. And we also have to trust the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's, there's a wisdom in everything. And one of the things that, that they say that when you read about or hear about trials and tribulations, and how many there are across the world, right? you read about them, one of the, the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remember is Al-Hakim. And some of the mashayikh would say that when you hear about trying things, tribulations, they all say, Ya Hakim. 
right, to call upon his name, almost wise. Because you may not understand Allah's wisdom in something, but it is there. It is there. Right? It is there. Right? You don't know how it is. Things are in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you worry about what's your responsibility and leave Allah's, what's Allah's to Him. Right? And have certitude in that. We'll take- Thank you for listening. This podcast was brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable Islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers. We offer a wide range of courses, podcasts, articles, and a world-class answer service. Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.